Uh, for those of you missed me this morning, I'm Tony Parisi. I'm wearing one of my other hats as a GLTF specification co-chair. With me, Amanda Watson from Oculus. And we're going to talk to you about GLTF. Let's start this off with a quiz question for folks in the room. What file formats does WebGL support? There are only two correct answers. Anyone? None. None, that's one. What's the other one? <laughs> that doesn't count. I meant 3D file formats. Not really. That's not correct. The other answer is anything you want, because WebGL doesn't actually define any file formats. It is a drawing API. It draws triangles on the screen. Everything else you want to do when you want to present data, you have to parse the data and draw it yourself using 3D primitives, the 2D primitives you're drawing with that are you know, basically projected from 3D. Um, so there we were. It was 2014, and we're all looking around going, it's 2014, there's no standardized 3D file format that has all the data we need that can be delivered into applications with efficiency. Uh, so a bunch of us started working on something called GLTF, the GL transmission format. Um, and so we can now uh, happily say, as of the end of last year, Kronos has standardized GLTF version 1. We actually have a file format that can get full scene data, animation, skins, materials, and a bunch of stuff. So this is the brief on that technology called GLTF. Um, it's Fast to transmit, this was intended for WebGL delivery in a browser, mobile delivery, so you know, over uh, uh, slow connections. Um, loads fast, describes full scenes and a bunch of stuff, is not dependent on any runtime, is no runtime semantics, it defines animations, but I mean nothing about behavior, interaction, any of that stuff. And it's an extensible spec, like all the Kronos.org specs. Um, this is what it looks like, GLTF files, basically a JSON package that describes a full scene with all the meshes, and all that the nodes in it, but not the rich data like the vertex data. That's in binary files. Thank you. Um, shading and you know also your keyframe data, all the stuff that would be fat that you don't want to do in text, we do in binary files. And those load right into WebGL type to raise. GLSL is used to define shaders. It can be in an external files or packed in base64 encoded with the whole payload as well as PNGs and JPEGs. Same deal. So it's very full, and there's a great ecosystem. We've been developing this for a while, but I don't have time to go through the whole timeline. But we're about to work on a next-gen spec, and we're going to get to that in a second. Um, so I actually want to bring Amanda up here, because we have a really strong ecosystem that's evolved around this. And it's not just people pledging support. It's a bunch of folks building tools. These slides are all online, so you can go look at this later. There's links to the, all the tool sets out there. Amanda, why don't you come up and spend half a minute talking about Oculus? All right, so um, this is my boss. He's probably not your boss, but I don't always know. Um, this is what he has to say about um, what we need for format on the web. Um, and to me, GLTF is exciting as far as standards go, because it's a standard the community is asking for. And what I'll say really quickly is that you should probably be paying attention if you're at a company that defines its own export format for stuff that comes out of Blender or Maya, and you could draw a picture that looks a lot like the one over there. Um, basically, if you can draw a picture like that, what that probably means is that um, switching to GLTF won't really change much from a rendering perspective, but it could change everything for a community of um, artists and developers that are using your tools and are looking for something with a community bigger than a single platform. Um, what we're doing at Oculus, um, we're releasing FBX to um, GLTF, which is a converter that will um, convert from, from FBX to um, an optimized GLTF for, um, that will get your draw calls and your memory down, and we have plans to release it as an open source project. That was a full Tim B.L. Good job, Amanda. All right. So there is a syntax validator for the spec uh, that we're calling a version 1.1. 1.1 has a few breaking changes to clean up syntax. It's mostly about tightly defining semantics. One minute. Thank you. Um, a fellow named Alexei Knyazev has written a great validator for it. A uh, bunch of stuff, this is all out in the clear on GitHub. You don't have to be a Kronos member, you can participate in the spec and watch all the issues flying by in real time. And finally, yesterday we got together, hosted by NVIDIA, and the working group started thinking about a roadmap for version 1.x or version 2, we call it GLTF Next. We care a lot about physically based materials and being able to get beyond just being able to do basically GLSL shading, which would get us to other platforms like HLSL, other APIs like Vulkan, and metal in these other areas. So we're going to kind of go up the stack a little bit and be a, a little higher level next version. Plus, we're making a bunch of functional enhancements. So please get involved if you care about this stuff. This is like the JPEG of 3D. It's going to be very important for everyone's pipelines, like Amanda said. Thank you very much.